It's been massive for us. If I could just add one more thing, this was a big learning for me this year. When you're solving problems, the best practice is always to kind of reverse engineer the issue, right? Well, when you're the leader, when you when you see of your company or you're the leader of the, the, the organization, right? It, you really have to the reverse engineering uh, process. Accounting, op, accounting di dictates operations. Operations dictate the sales, right? A lot of times you want to do it the other way around. And I'm the guy that in the beginning said sales cure all, just go sell more deals, right? Uh, still do that, <laughs> but you know if you're looking at it of like how do I operate. A, a really awesome business, great top line revenues, great profit margins, all that good stuff. You have to reverse engineer it in that, in that process. Accounting is something that we overlook completely, right? That's the one thing, because, you know, for the most part, it's the, you either, you get, you're doing great or you're not, and when you're not doing great, you don't want to look at it, when you're doing great, you don't care. That's, that's where you get in the, in the, in the trouble, right? You, you have got to look at your accounting, know your numbers, forecast your accounting, then take those, you know, what your what your findings are there to figure out how you're going to operate, right? Um, it's not just, some, maybe the answer is solve it with people, right? Maybe it is more hire more people, but what if you find out that you just can't afford that, right? <laughs> uh, you have to create an overall game plan for it, right? And then obviously, you know, sales, right? Um, and you see companies go out of business constantly because of this, right? There's only two reasons why solar companies go out of business and ultimately they end up being the same one. Cash flow, right? Cash flow is the answer, and it comes from either companies selling so many deals to where they break their fulfillment partner or their fulfillment arm of their business because they can't fulfill, um, or they, they simply run out of cash because they don't have a capital vehicle to back them up or they weren't managing their accounting correctly, right? We're in a cash flow business. We're not in a profit business. We're in a cash flow business. Yeah, yeah so that's that's be something to, to add to that, and I think it's really important, it's like, you gotta know when to collaborate, right? A lot of the things that I see in the industry is like, yeah, I'm gonna be fully integrated, you know, already because I'm so pissed at my, you know, installer, and you know, I think I can do things better, right? And we go through that ramp, which is like, I'm gonna do everything at once. But you know, like you said, like you gotta look at your numbers. Can you really afford to hire somebody? Yeah, there's tons of talent, but is do you is it within your cash flow to hire somebody at a fifty thousand salary and then thirty and then forty and fifty and hundred, right? And you keep going through this ramp, which you're ultimately like in a pretty big debt. So, you know, sometimes I think I, I see that a lot and I've seen it through, um, you know, I, I literally, my school was working with one of the largest installation companies in the whole nation, it was through Titan, right? And I seen how these guys were able to lift up and, um, you know, and I've learned a lot of the things internally from there, right? And my ego could have said, you know, when we became a multi-million dollar company, I would say, oh, you know what, I can do it better now because now I got some cash flow and I'm doing all right, right? But I think a lot of the things that are going out, you know, within the industry, we gotta be careful, is like not letting yourself like, just like, make a decision just because of an ego statistic or because of what this guy is doing is go back to your books and see if that's something that aligns with your goals and what you could literally afford or if you're willing to go in and take that you know maybe that investor or this money into your pocket and are you able to actually even handle it so i think that's one of the biggest things i've seen like list of 500 dealers for list of 500 companies like just build out of scratch been a lot of things that over 65 percent of the companies go out of business because they don't look at those numbers, right? Just like he said, like, like, are you looking at it? Are you looking at? Are you walking away from the conversation? Are you just, you know, looking into like, I'm gonna be more cool because I'm fully integrated? Like, it happens, but just, just analyze that, and I think it'll get you like push you um, pretty far. So, yeah, and bad numbers are typically a reflection of bad policies, right? And so, in the in, in the recruiting world right now in solar, it's wild. Right, and that really encourages bad policies for, for companies to adopt to try and stay competitive. And you're gonna see a lot of consolidation. I mean, the, 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 the landscape now compared to D2D Con 2024, right? I mean, it's gonna be different. And the recruiting landscape's gonna evolve quite a bit. And so as reps, you need to be sensitive to these things that they, these guys are saying. I mean, these are, really, these are real challenges that solar company ownership face. They wanna provide a good experience for you but they have to be sensitive to making sure they're a sustainable, well-set-up business.